Okay guys, so today what we are going to talk about is an introduction into probability. So before we like actually really dive into probability, we need to talk about uh, a random experiment. So let's do a little bit of a sub. Okay, so when we do a random experiment, uh, the, the random experiment is defined by a few things. So one, we have to say like only one outcome can happen at a time. Uh, the next thing that we also have to say uh, is that not only does one outcome happen to happen at a time, but the outcomes have to be uncertain or results are uncertain. And then we can say that all outcomes form what is known as a sample space. All right, so these are our definitions of basically a random experiment. And let's make an example so that we can be really uh, specific about what's going on here. So for our random experiment today, we are going to be rolling a dice. So rolling a dice fits all of these parameters. Uh, only one outcome can happen at a time, and we're talking about just a regular six-sided dice. One outcome can happen at a time. Uh, the results are uncertain. For any given dice roll, I don't know what next, what number is going to happen next. If I did, I could make a lot of money uh, gambling or you know, playing all your friends in different games and winning them all. Um, but I don't know what the next dice roll is. The dice roll is uncertain, and all f outcomes form what's known as a sample space. So let's build a sample space. A sample space uh, is the shorthand is written like this. This weird little capital S with kind of these like little hashes at the tails. And we usually write it in braces or in these squiggly brackets. And I'm going to write out all possible outcomes. Okay, and that is what's known as a sample space. So when we're doing this random experiment, we should have some sort of all possible outcomes uh, that, that can come out. So that's my roll of a dice for my random experiment. And I have my sample space established. Now, when I have my sample space established, uh, sometimes we also use a kind of a graphical representation of a sample space. So I'll write that one over here. Our sample space can oftentimes also be written like this. We'll sometimes write it in a box and put all of our outcomes up here. One, two, three, four, five, and six. It's another way that we can kind of represent uh, our sample space. Okay, so we now know that we have a sample space and a sample space once again is defined by its outcomes. So let me label that real quick. All right, so we've got our sample space and we've got our outcomes. Okay, we're getting really close to actually being able to talk about probability now. All right, so the next thing that we need to talk about is what's called an event. Now, an event uh, is just some set of outcomes. So let me create a certain event. So let's say event A equals, uh, let's do evens. And if a is equal to the evens, then it's going to be equal to 2, 4, and 6. 
Okay, so now that we have our event stated, now we're ready to talk about our probability. So let's say we're getting ready to roll our dice. We know that all of our possible outcomes are one through six. That's what defines our sample space. And we are specifically interested in the event of A happening, which is an even. And I want to know what is the probability that event A will occur from this scenario. All right, well, there is a, a way that we formalize how we write this. So when we want to know this probability, we can write that the probability of event A in general terms is equal to the number of outcomes in A divided by number of outcomes in the sample space. So this is like we should have been able to hopefully have thought of this already, but this is just how we formalize it. If I were to ask you what's the probability that you roll an even on a six-sided dice, you would have said, well, there's six, there's six outcomes, and three of them are evens, and so that would give me a 50% chance. And we have just now taken the time and formalized like how that is correct. So we've got the probability of event A would then be equal to three outcomes in our event A divided by the six total outcomes in our sample space, and that is going to equal to be 50%. There's that 50% probability. Now we can get, when we look at this, we could also say that this is event A, right? We could actually circle all of what is in event A. We could label that guy as equal to A. And we could also kind of visualize and say, hey, we've have, we have highlighted 50% of the data in our sample space. So before we end, I want to give just a few things uh, about some rules about what probability has for the rules of our probabilities. So probability of A, it has to be somewhere between 0 and 1 inclusive. Our probabilities can't be over 100% and they can't be less than 0. Now, if a probability of A equals 1, that means that it must happen. It will happen with certainty. So, I, if my event is the, the prob, so my event would be 1 through 6, and that's all of my possible outcomes, then the probability that that happens is 100%. So this is must happen. Conversely, if our probability of A equals 0, it must not happen. So suppose I need to, you know, I'm playing some game and I need to roll the number 7 on our standard six-sided dice. Uh, the probability that that event actually happens is zero because it's outside of our sample space. So kind of up here, it'd be like the number 7 out here, and that's what we want, but it's outside of our sample space. Okay, so besides that, uh, the probability can be any number inside of from 0 to 1. And the, on a sub thing, if we were to sum up the probability of every single outcome in our sample space, the sum has to equal 1. The, the parts, the sum of the parts cannot be over one, and they can't be less than one. They actually they have to sum up to 100%.